So we've got all our pocketing done. We've got all our main features done. The holes have been drilled and tapped. I'll go ahead and turn my shading back on. Now, final thing, it's not actually called out here, but I like to do in most instances where I'm able to is called chamfering. So what that does is actually break these edges so that I don't slice my fingers open when I am handling the part. Now, in Mastercam, there are some features that allow you to put on chamfers right here, right? So one distant chamfer. I'll go ahead and I'll put that on this edge just to show you. And my distance, I'll make it 0 0.02. I'll go ahead and OK. And you can see that creates 20 thousandths of an inch chamfer on that edge. Now, a lot of times you'll get these models that have chamfers that are already there, right? And that's fine, but in order to actually chain a chamfer like that, it's a kind of critical. So I'll go ahead and chamfer this whole upside here just to show you kind of what I mean. So I'll go ahead and chamfer this to show you what it would look like. I guess I have to select it all. That's annoying. Because it does involve a slightly different approach of chaining. Okay, so we've got our whole edge there chamfered. Go ahead and create that. Now it created a bunch of dirty toolpaths, so I'll regenerate all those. I'm not sure why, it doesn't really matter, but we'll go ahead and regen all of those. That's why. So I've made a dirty toolpath that needs to be refixed with um, that chamfer been, being added, right? So this wall here looks like it needs to be fixed. So I'll go ahead and show you how to rechain geometry for that. So in my 2D contour, I'll go into my chain and I'll look and see if I can see anything, right? There's no chain there. So what I can do, right click and click rechain all. All right, using my edge selection method, I'll choose this outer edge here. And I'll walk through here, 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 here. All right, and that should fix that problem. There we go. So if I want to chamfer this edge, I want to make sure that I need to select this bottom edge here. I don't want to select the top edge, and I'll show you why. So in our toolpath manager, let's go ahead and write a contour toolpath. Okay, I'll go ahead and I'll select this outer bottom edge. I want to make sure loop is on again. Here, choose that. Oh no. Yep, this happens sometimes where it, it funkily chooses the faces instead. So I'll unselect all. Yes, I'm sure. And I'll use the edge method, unfortunately. It's kind of frustrating. But we'll go ahead and choose our edges on that bottom edge there. Okay, and I can actually then choose this. Hopefully I can choose it as a loop. There we have it right there. So, okay. And before I exit out of here, I'm gonna go right back into that and make sure my chains are correct. And it looks like they are in terms of the directions. So, looks good. So clockwise, and then this one's actually wrong. Sorry about that. I need to reverse the chain. So I wanna be going counterclockwise on the loop here. So to do that, I'll reverse my chain and that fixes that right up. Okay. Now if you can guess it, what kind of tool we're going to use for chamfering, it's a chamfer mill. So we'll go into our library of tools and we'll select a chamfer mill. Where are you hiding? There we go. Chamfer mill. Double click that and we'll use the half inch chamfer mill. Okay, our comment, we're going to write chamfer the edges. If I can spell. Okay, so cut parameters is where we're going to do a lot of our work. So in our contour type dropdown, I've got two-dimensional chamfer. Okay, and in my chamfer width, 
let's say we want to chamfer it 20 thousandths of an inch, so 0 0.02. And because it's a 45 degree right triangle, chamfer width will translate to chamfer depth as well. And for my bottom offset, you can see all chamfer mills are going to have a flat point at the bottom, so they do not come to a perfect point. So you want that bottom tip to be extended beyond where your chamfer is going to be. And you can use 0.1. I like 0.05 in case I'm working in a smaller space or shallower where I don't want to hit the bottom. And lead in, lead out we can leave. And then the main thing about chamfering is you want to make sure your depth is set to zero, right? So absolute zero, because we've already actually defined how deep we're, we're going to be cutting right there. So if you don't change this to zero, it's going to add whatever value you have here to that number. So we do not want that. So zero as my depth and we'll take a look at that so you can see I've got two chamfers all right in the second one I could change the lead in lead out or the yeah the lead in lead out start point there and in a chamfer it doesn't really matter that much if it starts like that in a corner but I'll go ahead and I'll change it if I can to where we had it before that should clear that issue up. All right, so we've got our chamfer there. We'll take a back plot quickly here and take a look at what we're working with. So S key stepping through, and I can see perfectly my chamfer mill is cutting exactly where I want it to. Okay, so chamfering is really a finishing operation that if you can do it, you should do it because it prevents you from having to do a bunch of hand finishing which is always appreciated. Getting down on this edge right here is pretty impossible, so we won't worry about that. Now, a little pro tip feature that I like to use in a lot of instances is for these vertical edges, you can actually deburr those on the machine in your tool paths. So it's a little, a little bit of a secret feature that I found that comes in handy quite a bit. So what I'm gonna do is find my tool path for the outside of the part. So profile the outside, right? And I can actually either do this on both or just on one, but I'll use it on the roughing and we'll take a look. So if I go back into my parameters for that tool path and I go into cut parameters here, I can actually put a break on the on the edge, so external corner break radius, okay? I can actually put a value here, and that's gonna basically roll that cutter around it, leaving a radius, however large that radius I leave is. So for something like this, I can use a small value of, let's say, 0.01 inch, and that's gonna leave a very small break, right? So in a part like this, that's kind of a negligible amount, but if your part calls for you know, you don't want to have too big a value there. So usually something small like that or 005, um, we'll go ahead and use one so we can look and see what that's going to look like. And I'll go ahead and do it in the finish pass as well. 0 0.01 inch and regenerate those two. I guess we'll do all of them. And let's go ahead and run all of this through verify to see what it looks like. So now if we zoom in, you can actually see that small um, little edge break right there. So I might actually use a little smaller, but just to show you kind of what it looks like. You don't have to use that, but again, I find it quite useful in deburring parts. So we'll again save, and part's all set. All we got to do now is flip it over and face off all that extra material. So in the last video, I'll show you how to do that. See you soon.